Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a beautiful shiny dark chocolate mirror glaze. The clips coming up are actually taken from my new course I've just released where I teach you guys how to make a mousse cake from scratch and it includes both pre-recorded videos and PDFs with tips and recipes. Link below if you want to check it out but apart from that let's get straight into this mirror glaze. So for our chocolate mirror glaze today, what we need is some heavy cream, some cocoa powder, water, coffee powder, some white granulated sugar, some gelatin powder, and then some water to bloom our gelatin. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by blooming my gelatin and then putting that aside. Now I'm just going to bloom it in the same way that I did when I was making my chocolate mousse cake. So I've just got some water here and again the full quantities will be in the PDF which is attached to this video. And then I'm just going to add in my gelatin powder. Just give that a little mix. And now I'm just going to pop this aside to allow this to bloom up while we go ahead and work on the rest of our glaze. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to combine my cocoa powder, water and my coffee powder into a saucepan. Now the reason why I'm putting it directly into my saucepan is because we are going to heat this up very shortly. So we aren't going to turn on the heat just yet. So first what you want to do is just combine those three ingredients into your saucepan and then just give it a little mix until it becomes like a thick paste. Now you want to use a spatula for this as opposed to a whisk because because a whisk is going to incorporate air bubbles into our mixture and we don't want any air bubbles in our glaze so that it's really nice and smooth. So instead I like to just use a spatula while making my mirror glaze. It's also best to use a deep saucepan for this because as it rises when we heat it up later then you know this prevents it from kind of overflowing but I'm using a small saucepan for the purposes of this video so that you guys can see the kind of mixture inside a bit better. And just remember that we don't have the heat on just yet. Now the coffee powder again is optional but I always love to add a little touch of coffee to anything chocolatey that I make because it really helps to amplify that chocolate flavour. And now I'm just going to give this a stir until it becomes a thick paste. Okay, now as you can see, we've got this kind of thick, you know, chocolatey paste now, and it's really nice and silky smooth, which is what you want. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start slowly pouring in my cream and then I'm going to add in my sugar after that and just mix that all in. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of my cream first just to help me kind of loosen up my chocolatey mixture there and then I'll add the rest in. The great thing about using a spatula too is that it helps you kind of really get everything out of you know your bowl or your cup. Now once you've mixed in all of that cream then you should be left with you know kind of like a thick liquidy mixture and now I'm going to add in my sugar Now once that's all nicely mixed in then it's time to turn on the heat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this to a boil in a medium heat and once it starts to boil then I'm going to turn it off the heat and then add in my bloomed gelatin and just let that kind of melt away into my chocolate glaze. So my mix just started to boil now, so as you can see it's like bubbling at the top there. So now I'm going to turn off the heat and add in my bloomed gelatin. Now when it comes to adding in the gelatin, I don't need to pop it into the microwave to make it liquid. I'm just going to put the whole lump straight in like that because my mixture is nice and warm. So that's what's going to kind of help melt that gelatin into my entire mixture. Now one thing I forgot to mention was as you're making your initial mixture and bringing it to a boil, you want to make sure that you keep slowly stirring it so that it doesn't burn on the bottom. So now I've got my little clump of gelatin and I'm just going to pop that right in. Now I'm just going to stir that just very gently for maybe about a minute until the gelatin is completely dissolved. 
Now once the gelatin is completely melted into the mixture, the next step is to put it through a sieve. So I've got a large sifter here and that's going to kind of make it really nice and silky smooth and remove any, you know, kind of little lumps or anything like that that may have, you know, remained from the initial cocoa powder mixture that we made. Now I'm pouring mine straight into a jug which has a little spout on it because this will make it a lot easier when we come to pouring it over our cake. Now when you're pouring the mixture through your sieve, you want to make sure that you're pouring it as close as possible. So don't kind of, you know, pour it too high, otherwise it's going to incorporate air bubbles into our mixture which we don't want. Okay, now once that's done, the next step is to simply let this sit aside now to cool down to around 30 degrees Celsius before we pour it over our chocolate mousse cake. Now, if we let this cool the way that it is, then what's going to happen is it's going to develop a kind of skin on the top of your mirror glaze, which we don't want. So to prevent that from happening, what you can do is just grab some glad wrap or cling wrap. Just break a little bit off. And then what you want to do is you want to push it down so that it's touching the top of your mirror glaze. And just make sure that you've got it touching right to the corners. So it should look something like that. And that is it. That is going to prevent a skin from developing on the top of our mirror glaze. And now we're simply going to let this set aside for around two to three hours. It depends on the climate that you're staying in, but generally anywhere between two to three hours should be fine. I say just check it at the two hour mark. And you want to use a kitchen thermometer to check whether your glaze is at the right temperature. Now I've already made one earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and get our chocolate mousse cake out of the freezer and show you how I take it out of the mold and pull my chocolate glaze over the top. Now once your glaze is ready to go, I've got mine here. I made another batch earlier and I've just got my thermometer on here which is helping me track the temperature to make sure that my glaze isn't getting too cold or too hot and this is what the consistency should look like so you know it has thickened up quite a bit but it's still quite liquidy in consistency now you don't want your glaze to be too thick or too thin because if it's too thin then it's just going to run off your mousse cake and you know it's not going to cover it properly but if it's too thick then it's going to leave like too thick of a layer on your mousse cake and this is particularly important you know when you're using a mold that has some sort of special design on it so today I'm using my you know geometric mold here which has got heaps of kind of sharp corners which you really want to show through the glaze so that is why you don't want your glaze to be too thick either otherwise it's going to kind of dampen the effect of all those sharp corners on your mold so yeah, once your glaze is ready, you're now ready to remove the mold from your mousse cake. So what I've got here is I've got my mousse cake from, you know, yesterday, and I'm simply going to remove the cling wrap. Now before I take it out of the mold, what you want to have prepared first is something which you can put your cake directly onto, which we're then going to pour our glaze over. So what I've got here is I've got a pan which my glaze is going to fall into, and then I've just got my little six inch cake tin like the one I used earlier to make my chocolate cake, and I'm simply going to place that upside down, and this is what my mousse cake is going to be sitting on. Now the reason why I like to put it on something which is elevated and you know nothing's kind of touching the bottom of the edges of the mousse cake is because this allows the glaze to kind of fall really nicely and kind of set nicely on the side of the cake and then I'll show you how to clean it all up once we get to that point. So yeah once that's ready we're ready to remove our cake from our mold. Now the way you want to do this is you just want to start really gently removing the mold from the edges and then work your way you know deeper and deeper into the mold. Now once I've kind of released that top edge, I'm going to flip my mold over and then slowly pull the mold off of my chocolate mousse. Okay, so I've got my mold off and that really beautiful design is coming through, which I'm super happy with. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place my cake on top of my six inch cake pan and then I'm going to go ahead and start gently pouring the glaze over my cake until it's completely covered. Now as I've placed my chocolate mousse cake on my 6 inch cake tin, I've noticed that it's still a little bit too big than you know what I want because it's just touching kind of the bottom edge of my mousse cake but I want actually the edges of my mousse cake to be completely bare so with nothing touching it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap my cake tin out with a 4 inch cake tin so that I've got a bit more space on the edges of my cake.
Okay, now that's looking a lot better now. And just remember that this doesn't have to be a cake tin. It can be like a big cup or maybe like a saucer or something like that. Anything that's going to, you know, have a nice flat bottom that, you know, your mousse cake can sit on and, you know, it's got that kind of space on the edges. And now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to gently pour over my chocolate mirror glaze. Okay, so I've poured my chocolate glaze over my cake. It looks absolutely incredible. I'm really happy with it. It's super shiny. And you know, all those kind of subtle patterns in the mold has come through. So that's what I mean by, you know, you want your glaze to be, you know, thin enough that, you know, those patterns are going to come through, um, but you know, not too thin that it's not kind of, you know, covering your cake well. So yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you guys how to clean up this cake and then transfer it onto a cake board or a cake stand, whatever your, you know, your cake is going to be sitting on. Now to clean up the bottom of this cake, I'm just going to use my offset spatula to kind of drag any of that excess glaze that's kind of hanging on the bottom of the cake into the middle of the cake. And you just want to really gently do this. Okay, now once you've kind of mostly cleaned up the bottoms of the cake, then the next step is to transfer this onto a cake board. So what I've got here is I've got a square 10 inch cake board, which my cake is going to be sitting on. And you know, if you're not using a cake board, then you can totally just transfer your cake straight onto a cake stand. Now to transfer my cake from, you know, my cake tin to my cake board is I'm just going to use two offset spatulas. You can even use, you know, like, big knives or you know anything that's kind of nice and flat and I'm just going to simply place it on the bottom of the edge of you know either side of my mousse cake and I'm simply going to lift it up and gently place it into the middle of my cake board. Now you do want to make sure that you know you're not letting this sit for too long otherwise your chocolate mousse is going to get soft and it's not going to be easy for you to kind of lift it up so if you do feel like you know once you're lifting it if your chocolate mousse feels a little bit soft then just pop this into the fridge for you know maybe about half an hour or so and then you can lift it up and put it on your cake board. and you just wanna be really gentle with it. And then just gently slide your knife out and don't worry about you know any kind of mess because we can clean that up later. That is probably the most nerve-wracking part of making this whole cake, but you know once you've got it nicely onto your cake board, then now you can finish off by cleaning up and decorating this cake however you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first clean up the edges of my cake and I'm just going to use a little tissue which I have dabbed in a little bit of water and I'm just going to use that to get into the little corners and wipe off any of that kind of extra glaze that's sticking out. Now I'm not too fussed about getting, you know, super clean edges because I am going to be decorating this by putting some grated chocolate around the edge of my cake, which I'm going to be showing you guys next. So that is it guys, if you want to check out the full course on how to make this mousse cake from scratch, which includes how to make the cake layer, chocolate mousse, the process of filling and freezing the mousse so it's ready for glazing, and of course the final decorating in the end, then check out the links below, you can find the course on Skillshare, and it's also available for purchase directly from my website for a super reasonable price. So go ahead and check it out, I really appreciate the support, and yeah that's about it, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.